Well, time to go voice the unpopular opinion. Before we begin, I'd like to reiterate something about my reviewing process. I never tell you guys what to think. I encourage you guys to think by presenting different ways of looking at various pieces of pop culture, but I never say you guys have to agree with me. If you like something I dislike or dislike something I like, that's fine. Heck, oftentimes I wish I could join you guys if you happen to like something I dislike. But ultimately, I'm not the sort of person who goes along blindly with crowds. I feel my own feelings and I think my own thoughts and I'm going to call things the way I call them. But they are ultimately still just my own feelings and I don't necessarily think you have to agree with them. And I want you to keep that in mind because moving forward, I don't want to keep repeating the phrase in my opinion throughout the rest of this video. All that being said, Shin Godzilla is terrible. There, I said it. I hate Shin Godzilla. In terms of movies, it's one of the biggest letdowns I've ever seen. I spent a year feeling like I couldn't get into the biggest Godzilla party ever, and now I'm glad I missed it because I wouldn't have had any fun there. I can't remember the last time I was this disappointed by a Godzilla movie. Heck, by a movie in general. Even the Dark Universe Mummy I was half expecting to suck anyway. Now I'm sure those of you who didn't immediately click off the video are wondering how I could possibly dislike the film most fans are calling the best Godzilla movie in years. Well, I'm willing to explain if you're willing to listen. First of all, let me dispel something I've kept hearing since I started expressing my concern for Godzilla Monster Planet. No, the fact that this movie was produced by Toho means nothing about the quality. I've seen so many people bring this up as if just the fact that it's the original studio automatically equates to better quality than anything made in America. Sorry, but no, the fact that it was produced by Toho does not automatically mean it's good. By that logic, you just admitted that Batman v Superman is a great film. What? It was produced by Warner Brothers and DC Comics, so that automatically equates to higher quality and solid understanding of the characters, right? Look, Toho is not a singular entity. Toho is a company with an ever-changing internal hierarchy and structure. Toho did not make Godzilla. Tomoyuki Tanaka, Ishiro Honda, Akira Ifukube, Iji Tsuburaya, and Haruo Nakajima made Godzilla. Toho is just the place where they made it. Also, you may recall that plenty of bad Godzilla movies have been produced by Toho over the six decades this franchise has been running, so just saying better because Toho would make no sense whether there was an American version or not. Ergo, Shin Godzilla always had the same potential as any other G-film to be either good or bad. But none of that is directly connected to the film itself, so where does my critique actually begin? Let's start with the plot, shall we? Now, once again, what we have here is a movie heavily focused on the human side of things. Specifically, the movie's central premise is presenting a realistic portrayal of how the modern-day nation of Japan would respond to a kaiju attack, and all of the complications that come with it thanks to the post-war restrictions on the self-defense force. It covers everything from how to interpret the law to the formation of special groups to analyze the threat. Now, Shin Godzilla is not the first movie to do this. Political elements have also played small roles in such movies as The Return of Godzilla, Gamera Guardian of the Universe, GMK, and yes, the original Godzilla. But the emphasis is on the word small. In the four other examples given, the political angle only mattered in a handful of scenes meant more to develop the world than advance the plot. Heck, in GMK, the red tape was used to provide a laugh because of how ridiculous it is. It was never the driving force of a kaiju movie before Shin Godzilla came along. And now I know why. Because it completely bogs down the movie. What was clearly meant to be an intense political thriller instead just wound up giving us a plethora of frustrating moments, like how the Prime Minister keeps hesitating to approve attacks on Shin Godzilla for reasons that, quite frankly, make him look pathetic. Oh no, we can't shoot the monster that's killing hundreds of people because we might hit the two homeless folks still down there. A chance of hurting two people totally justifies not taking actions which will definitely save millions. 
Look, I get that part of the movie's theme is about government inefficiency, but after a certain point, it had me rolling my eyes for all the wrong reasons. Speaking of the wishy-washy Prime Minister, the cast of characters also suffers in this movie. You see this shot? Notice how the character is being introduced by text at the top of the screen? That is literally how every single character in this movie gets introduced. And the movie does this so it can cut straight through to the action. Now sure, you can argue that the movie wastes no time getting the plot rolling. But as a result, no time at all is devoted to showing us who these characters are or why we should care about them. None of them show up until they are needed in the plot, and everything that they say and do is focused on the plot, with no room for anything else, and thus no reason given why we ought to care what happens to them. Heck, we only ever learn the life goal of one character, but it's not mentioned until the final quarter of the film, by which point it's too little too late. Oh, so the girl from America wants to be the American president one day. I guess that kind of explains some of her behavior. Good thing we were given this information an hour and 36 minutes into this two-hour movie. Then there's the soundtrack, which is a mix of both new music by Shiro Sagisu and classic tracks from Akira Ifukube, including songs from the original Godzilla, King Kong vs. Godzilla, and Battle in Outer Space for some reason. For the most part, it's good music, but the way it's implemented just doesn't work. Persecution of the masses would have been great for dramatic scenes of Shin Godzilla killing the fleeing people of Tokyo, but instead it plays over rapidly cut scenes of the characters interpreting the Japanese constitution, and it doesn't fit at all. Correct. Article 76 says in an armed attack, self-defense troops are allowed to use force, but this doesn't qualify as an armed attack. Who Will Know, a song allegedly written from Shin Godzilla's perspective, would have sounded great over a dramatic scene of Shin Godzilla's death. But instead, it plays when Godzilla first fires his heat ray, which creates a kind of musical disconnect. In regards to the recycled music, Godzilla Comes Ashore is played during the scene where we first see Godzilla mutate, even though it doesn't fit the scene. It was originally written for when Godzilla appears in Tokyo Bay for the first time, moving slowly and eerily. But for this shot, it feels more like it was included because it's a recognizable piece of Godzilla music. Then you have baffling pieces like Early Morning Tokyo, which completely disrupt the tone. All flights out of Narita have been canceled. We have several reports of fires blazing out of control in Shinagawa. Verified that most yeah, that's actual music from the movie. It's really a shame one of the few things I liked about it still has problems. Which brings us to Shin Godzilla himself. Now, usually... I can let a lot of stuff slide in a bad monster movie, so long as it delivers on the actual monster side of things. So at the very least, Shin Godzilla the movie had to deliver good monster moments to redeem itself. But it didn't. In fact, Shin Godzilla is the worst reinterpretation of Godzilla I have ever seen. Nope. No, I'm standing by what I said. One of the things which has allowed Godzilla to last through the years is the fact that he's not just a big dumb monster that says roar and breaks stuff. He's a character. The fact that he's usually played by a man in a suit means he's always imbued with personality and a sense of purpose. Not only that, but his personality is the kind that can adapt easily to take on different kinds of roles. He's covered a wide spectrum, from campy superhero to murderous villain to amoral force of nature and everything in between, with varying shades of aggression, benevolence, and intelligence that make each new interpretation distinct. Godzilla as a character has had the kind of career most real-life actors would kill for. What is Shin Godzilla's personality? Well, he walks. That's it. Seriously, Shin Godzilla's entire character, from his motivations to his personality, consists of him walking forward. 
They even say as much in the movie. Well, behaviorally, all that it's done so far is move. His are the actions of a mindless automaton like the original Mogera. Except Mogera was supposed to be a mindless automaton. Shin Godzilla is supposed to be a living creature, but he doesn't act like one. He just plods forward, never slowing or deviating from his path, assuming he even has one. Why is he coming ashore? What is he attempting to do? Does he have any thoughts we can discern from watching his behavior? No. All he does is walk. Oh, silly me. There are a few times when he stops walking. The first time is so he can stand upright and just stand there staring into space until he flops back on his belly to keep walking. Then there's the first time he fires his heat ray, which is also the first time he ever reacts to anything that's going on around him exactly halfway through the film. And then there's the time a few minutes after that when he literally freezes in place and stays that way until the finale. For crying out loud, even the 98 movie, for as off the mark as it was, still gave its version of Godzilla more personality and motivation than this. You know, I expected better from Hideaki Anno, the director of Neon Genesis Evangelion, a series where the kaiju have no personalities and just walk forward. But he also directed that Nausicaa short film prequel, where the kaiju has no personality and just stands there for a few minutes before walking forward. Well, I expected better from Shinji Higuchi, who did the special effects for the Gamera trilogy. Wait, he didn't direct those. But he did direct those terrible live-action Attack on Titan movies where the kaiju have no personalities and just walk forward. Who am I kidding? This was destined to happen. Now sure, Shin Godzilla could potentially be the most powerful version of Godzilla on film, but even that winds up backfiring. The sequence where he fires his heat ray sees it cause destruction on a scale never before seen in this genre as the continuous blast wrecks Tokyo. However, this results in Shin Godzilla staying rooted in place to cause destruction that's over too quickly to have much of an impact. Sure, it's impressive he could do that, but it also feels very impersonal. Unlike the original Godzilla, who deliberately and physically tore through buildings throughout Tokyo until there was nothing left, Shin Godzilla only destroys stuff that's directly in front of him, and never in a way that feels intentional. Even his ludicrously long tail somewhat improbably manages to writhe around without hitting a single thing. So basically, all I have to do to avoid being killed by Shin Godzilla is to stay to his immediate left or right because he only destroys that which is immediately in front of him. Compare that to the Godzilla in GMK, who turns around to kill people who draw his attention and who can still kill you even if he appears to have passed you by. You may have noticed I've been calling this creature Shin Godzilla throughout the video. That's a very deliberate choice on my part because I cannot bring myself to call this creature Godzilla and count him as equal to all of the others. Nor do I think he should be counted as equal. There are plenty of other things I could discuss, some of which admittedly might be nitpicking, but which are issues either way. Having Shin Godzilla fire lasers from his back and tail winds up looking more weird than cool. The second and third forms have awful designs and the fourth form suffers from bad proportioning. The rapid music video editing of some sequences feels jarring, and some of the cinematography choices are just head-scratching. I don't know why this guy has a pink towel slung over his shoulders, but it's kind of distracting. The solution they use to finally defeat Shin Godzilla is needlessly convoluted and uses a twist that felt more like a joke than anything else, and I know that because I made that exact joke before they revealed that it was indeed the key to solving the problem. Seriously? Origami was the key to solving this chemistry puzzle? I've seen parodies of the Da Vinci Code more plausible than this. And of course, the movie is painfully long with nothing to justify its length, as already mentioned. Like I said, if you like Shin Godzilla, good for you. I wish I could join you, but sadly, I can't. Shin Godzilla falters on basically every level. Is it the worst Godzilla movie ever? I don't know about that, but it still makes my bottom five no matter what. Since I'm a diehard fan, I still own the DVD, and maybe my feelings towards it will mellow over time, but I doubt I'll ever circle around to actually liking it. As far as I'm concerned, 
Shin Godzilla was a disappointment through and through. Well, great. Now I'm depressed. I need to do something positive to boost my spirits. Maybe I'll do something constructive for the kaiju community. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what I'm going to do. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer, signing off. What's that? You want to know what I think of Shin Godzilla as compared to the 2014 Godzilla? Oh, trust me, I have a whole separate video planned for that one.